Uh, Mike Bean wants to know what time the show starts. Uh, show hasn't started yet, actually. That's uh, that's what this button's for. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 149 for Thursday, the 9th of November, 2017. Is it really the 9th of November? It seems crazy late in the year, doesn't it? Uh, this is your two lifelong friends and, and uh, the, their, their lack of guest uh, celebrates all <laughs> things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. It's just us tonight, man. Uh, how you feeling, dude? Man, this has been a fucking hell of a week. Um, I'm so glad it's Thursday, though, because... Ritual Misery always cheers me up, and uh, this is great, man. Uh, your your week has uh, probably amazingly been worse than mine. Um, so the weekend was really busy, um, yeah. un- undecorating and things like that from last week's Halloween party, and doing all that kind of stuff, and then prepping for the surgery on Monday morning. Um. Yeah, have you ever ever shown up really early to an appointment? Uh, sure. Yeah, like how early? Uh, maybe as much as like forty five minutes early. Yeah. So earlier this year, I showed up an hour early to a dental appointment. Okay. They they told me like half an hour after I'd been already sitting there for a while that I was early. So at least they told me, right? Uh, right. Uh, my surgery time got moved from 8.30 to 10.30. They didn't bother telling us when we checked in at 6.30 in the morning. So we sat in the in the little, like, I did the prep, went in, did the pre-scrub, got the the stuff on, was laying in the bed, waiting, chilling out, waiting. Um, yeah, that's two extra hours that my wife and I could have, like, I don't know, she could have gone to breakfast or we could have checked out of the hotel. or So we sat there for an extra two hours, and then the surgery started an hour late. So we were we were there for five hours before the surgery, before they actually, like, did anything. Jeez, man. Yeah. That is fucking torture. Yeah. What did you do? Uh, we sat there and we chat, chit-chatted. She napped. Um, we we, we met, did Facebook. I mean, like, we just made the time go by. At one point, yeah. I sent, once we found out that the, the, the surgery was still later, I was like, okay, we'll go ahead and check out of the hotel room, get some breakfast before the breakfast closes and shit like that and come back. And, of course, she leaves. And then as soon as she leaves, everybody starts coming in and, and things start happening. Uh, my... My least favorite, my most anxiety filled part of the surgery, of course, is the IV because I hate needles going mm-hmm. in or coming out. Um, and that happened like apparently she had just checked out of the hotel room. I sent her a message saying, Hey, it's uh, you know, the 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 they're putting the IV in now. And she's like, Oh shit. Well, she starts panicking. We're in a new different part of town that would stay at a hotel that we hadn't stayed in, in Anchorage before. And she didn't turn her GPS on. The snow on the ground. She's in my truck. She's trying to drive from four wheel drive without sliding all over the road. She's getting panicky. She missed a turn. So I'm basically on the phone with her while I'm getting my IV put in, which is helping me because it's distracting me from this fucking this whatever is going into my hand over here. And yeah. um, you know, trying to get her back on the road and using fine friends and stuff like that to make sure we go. It, it was it was interesting. It was quite the ordeal. And then she gets there and it's another two hours before they do anything again. Um, I, I do have to tell you, dude, you've never had surgery, right? You're, you're surgery free at this point. Uh, no, I, I did have one surgery. Um, oh, well you had a procedure. <sighs> yeah. Technically it was a surgery, but no, like a major I, surgery. No, I have not. You've never been put under anesthesia, like general anesthesia. Correct. Okay. Correct. So I've had volume. <clears throat> right. <laughs> That's as close as I've right. gotten. Um, so what they do is usually the, the anesthesiologist will come in after the IV is done. And he'll shoot you up with some stuff that'll make you kind of a little bit loopy, but not too bad. And it'll start the they'll start like the 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 pre surgery antibiotics and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then just before they wheel you back, the anesthesiologist will come back and be like, "Okay, well here's the rest of your stuff." Um, and then you that's when you say goodbye to your family, and then then you know you're fading away while you're talking avidly while your family's sitting there watching you go blah 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 blah, blah. and then they wheel you back <laughs> to the operating room. Yeah, yeah. Well, this surgery was different. Now, I've had them both ways. I've had surgeries where um, they uh, did. Hey, oh, yeah, I was going to say, somebody reset the titles. Um, I've had surgeries where I was awake the entire time when I had my heart surgery. They had to stop my heart. They didn't want to affect my heart rate. So they left me awake the entire time for both stoppages and everything else. That was, that was a trip. And I've had it to where they put you out really early and then you wake up and it's hard to get out. Like when my first knee surgery, I came in and out of consciousness probably eight times over the two hour period of time before I finally was able to stay awake. This time, 
they wheeled me back to the operating room. I got to meet everybody in the operating room. And then they pushed the, the, the sleepy drugs because they wanted me to go to sleep. And then while I was like still semi able to move, get me to lay on the, 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 the table because I had to be ass up in the air because they were working on my back. Mm. So that was, uh, it, it was it was something out of Cartmere's nightmares when I when I rolled in there half drugged up looking at this thing where my ass is gonna be up in the air and they got pictures of my spine everywhere in the room, um, yeah and then of course I'm consciously thinking okay I'm fading I'm fading I'm fading because I'm I'm thinking through this you know I'm fading 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 and then I wake up and when I wake up it's like oh shit the drugs didn't work and of course the surgery was over it was like a two and a half hour surgery and it was already done. Oh yeah, but because it's yeah. just that complete blank right there. It was, it was interesting. It was uncomfortable. I didn't like it. Um, and now my back really, really hurts. But I'm hopped up on drugs, and I can't drink beers with you tonight. So there you go. That's why I don't have a pre-show beer. <laughs> yeah, but you're doing drugs, so that's that's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, man, that sucks. So I had I had two thoughts that came into mind when you were telling your story. Uh, one was face down, ass up. That's the way you like to fuck. And um, the other one was uh, did you, did you ever watch? Uh, Dexter? Uh, no, no, it's on my, it's on my list. Okay, well, so I know his about mo, them. his mo is to like knock people out with a with a, a needle, like an anesthesia, like a general anesthesia, mm-hmm. and uh, then they wake up, like strapped to a table mm-hmm. where he like uh, does his his murdering, and uh, that's yeah, I was just picturing that because like the, the way that they film some of the episodes, they would film, uh some of the scenes like through the victim's eyes and right. like the whole fading out and yeah. Yeah. Uh, not good. Uh, dude. So like I said, I've had a shitty week, Yeah, but I have been able to, when it's not being horrible, I've been able to enjoy a little bit of like bachelorhood, like doing things that yeah. you can't do when your SO is around. Right. Uh, you know, like uh, like shitting with the door open. Right. Like that's I mean, a. That, I mean, you can. That's, you, that's something you can do with public com- when they're over, but or when you got company <laughs> over, but it's it's you're, they're not likely to return. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's always consequences to doing. Yeah. You can do it whenever you want. I mean, yeah. it's your own fucking house. Right. But there's always consequences. And even and if it's, it's someone else's house, you can still do it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, there's 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 no law saying you have to close the door when you take a shit. Uh, yeah, not at all. I mean, even if there in was, fact, I in mean, fact, it, it might be beneficial to people for you to shit with the door open if it's going to be a particularly gnarly shit. That way, the smell isn't concentrated in one room; it spreads right. out, and then other people don't have to gag so hard when they go in there. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's a, it's it reaches a, community... a level of equilibrium where you yeah. know it's not that it's not that bad. It's, I mean, you might smell it a little bit, but it, it, it's a public service at that point. <laughs> That's what I'm, yeah, exactly. So you're and, exercising uh, you know, your, your, your right. Like the dogs don't mind. So, no, the dogs know. actually probably like it. They're like, oh, okay, well, yeah, you know, we can bathe in this for a little bit. Like, oh, hey, what you cooking in there? <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Steph has been out of town for the last several days, and um, yeah, I, I miss her dearly. Uh, I'm looking forward to her return, but in her absence, I am doing my best to to make the best of it. And shitting with the door open has become one of my new hobbies. Yeah. Well, uh, so what else is there though? There's, there's shitting with the door open, uh, yep. cl- um, clipping toenails in the living room. Hmm? I said, you can make your own beef jerky. Cause um, that's what men do. Is, is that not something you can do when she's around? <laughs> I, I can't imagine Steph's like, Oh my, uh, no, no, you're not, you're not doing beef jerky again. There's no, not a chance <laughs> you're doing beef jerky in this house again while I'm here. Oh man, yeah, no. Um, I, I don't know. I'm always reminded of that scene in in uh, Step Brothers where Dale is pissed at his dad for getting married, and he tries to tell him all of these things that that we won't be able to do anymore. Mm. His dad's like, "We have done literally none, none of, of those it. things, and now we're not going to." <sighs> oh man, yeah. yeah, it's um no, it's it, it's been okay. Uh, I've been uh been uh trying to make the best of it um is is that is that like (laughs) is that like is that like code words for Pornhub um well no and you know that's that's one of those things too you know I can just um 
you know, do what I want with the door open. Uh, it doesn't have to be shitting. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, no, so before Steph left, though, like hours before Steph, Steph left? That's difficult to say. Uh, just before Steph. Just before Stephanie departed. <laughs> yes. Mere uh, we moments. Went saw, we went and saw Thor Ragnarok. Oh, yeah? Dude. I know you are like 74 movies behind in the the uh MCU movies. Yeah, yeah. Holy crap, dude. Thor Ragnarok is super duper fun. I don't know if you've seen the trailers. I have. But the first trailer pretty much sums up what this movie is. It is high adventure, high comedy, uh just a uh, just fun, man sitting there with a with a bucket of popcorn and people you care about and you're watching this in a darkened theater and the shit's loud like man it was it was one of my favorite two and a half hours of oh my that god day. it's two and a half hours long <laughs> it it's it's almost two and a half hours it's like Jeez. two hours and 15 minutes or something like that uh, but man so good so good yeah yep. um i have seen the justice league, justice league trailer about 20 times does that count I, uh, uh, I, I've recently discovered that my four-year-old is amazingly into Batman. So every time we're watching something on the Plex, we have the preview started, and that's like the big preview that's going on right now. So every time we start a new movie on, on the Plex, it shows that damn trailer, and every time it shows it, she wants to watch it. And every time, she's like, oh, my God, it's all Batman's friends. <laughs> um, I just I just can't. I just can't. Yeah. So Squid in the chat said that he was disappointed in it. It was uh, too much like Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, you know, I don't know. I Guardians was one of my favorite MC movies to date, and uh, I think it was great. And uh, plus, I uh, just want to say that Squid always is mad at something and hates everything. So, mm. uh, not not surprising that he didn't like it. Damn, uh, th that's uh, there you go. <laughs> Start. <laughs> got got to find some things that you enjoy, Squid. Um, <laughs> hey man, uh, you, you know. I have I have a pretty big house and we got a lot of computers and a lot of shit in the house and everything else and yeah. I'm I, I've gone the full spectrum of hey let's see how how customized I can make my network down to let's just make the network work like the most basic solution to make the network to where there's Wi-Fi in the entire house and all this stuff works well I tried this Netgear Orbi have you heard about this Uh no okay so. Uh, I I think I think I might have heard Podfeet mention it, but yeah. I don't remember what she said about it. Um, it, it basically, it's a router with uh, with a couple of satellites that will rebroadcast the signal, and they all use the same SSID for your Wi-Fi and and all all the you know. It's basically you set up oh, the router, right. and then the satellites just link up to that. And they there's a, a wireless back uh, 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 <clears throat> wireless uh, a backhaul, so that you don't have to have them physically connected and everything else. And then they've got uh, wireless or uh, cat five ports on it, cat six ports on it. So you can connect to, you know, you can wire to connect to the, to the satellites and then they will wirelessly connect to the router. Okay. Um, it works. I'm disappointed in, in, in some things though. Like the satellites don't necessarily show up on the screen where they're supposed to. And therefore the things that are connected to the satellites don't show up. So I can't see what all is connected to the network. I tried to turn the guest network on the other day and it basically killed the overall network. And for whatever reason, I'm not getting very good throughput on the wired side of things. Where before everything was fine wired and now it's not. And right. tonight it kind of capped it off. Like it just totally pissed me off, made, made it the topic of my anger for the day. <laughs> um, for whatever reason, some of the 2.4 gigahertz devices that I have in the house, because that's why this, that was the final reason that I had to upgrade my old routers because the 2.4 gigahertz um, uh, antenna, the, the, the spectrum wasn't working on the router. So, that's all your low, your low latency or your, uh, your, your low quality stuff. Your, like uh, your, your home, uh, your, uh, your switches, like my smart switches, the Ecobee, uh, things like that are all in a 2.4 gigahertz, uh, spectrum. And it wasn't working on the old router. So I had to go somewhere with it. And well, now the Ecobee won't hook up to the Orbi. Uh, one of my smart switches doesn't want to hook up to the Orbi. And there's no reason for it not to. It's just, it's so irritating. Like home networking is something we've been doing for 20, 25 years. Why can't we not get this shit right. just figured out? Like 
and I'm, I didn't do anything custom or anything special. I set, I set my SSID to my typical SSID and my passcode to the passcode I've used for several years now. So everything just automatically merge onto it. And it's still, I just can't get this shit to work. And it, it just pisses me off, man. Like, I, I just want it to work. Yeah, that's, dude, ah, that's my whole thing. Fucking work. Like, I don't know, pretty much for the last 20, 25 years, and it's not just networking stuff. It can be, it can be a computer. It can be a game. It can be uh, uh, something for your car. It could be, it doesn't matter. Any, any piece of tech. When it just doesn't fucking do the thing that it's supposed to do, I get so, so pissed off. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not it's not that I don't mind tinkering and figure out how to make things better or whatever, but if you're supposed to push the button and the light comes on and you push the button and the light doesn't fucking come on, God right. damn it. Yep. Yep. Oh, God. Yep. So mad. I'm so mad now. I'm mad. I'm mad for you, dude. <laughs> so mad. <laughs> um, in uh, W. Scott's one asked if I looked at, at Eero, and I did, and I don't remember why I discounted Eero. I, I don't, because I looked at all the different mesh networkings and everything else, because I have a, a, a larger house. Um, and my, my cable comes in into the garage, and that's where all my network stuff is. So my Wi Fi, central Wi Fi point is right there, and it won't reach to the to my shitter, and it won't reach down here. So there's like these two blank spots, which is why I wanted to to expand it and make it work a little bit better. And I don't remember why I discounted Eero, and but that was the first thing that came to my mind tonight when I couldn't get the Eco B on the on the fucking network. Ah, oh, just so irritating. Just make the shit work. Why can't the shit just work? So Oh man. So the yeah. Yeah. I, I was gonna make an Apple reference, but um I don't I don't want uh Mm. I don't want squid to rage quit. So, <laughs> I, so see here's here's the here's the thing though. Like I have um a time machine downstairs that we were using for the 2.4 and I have a um airport ex- extreme upstairs in our bedroom which is basically just being used as a router. I could use those, but as soon as I start turning on multiple Wi-Fi systems, if they're not properly designed to work together, you will be on the Wi-Fi upstairs and then you come down here and it's still trying to reach the router up there even though the same SSID and um and passcode are down here, it won't automatically switch. Devices don't automatically switch to a better signal. They have to be Correct. told to switch over. It's the yep. stupidest shit. Yep. Yep. I run into that all the time because I put a repeater in the uh like just under the bedroom window that's closest to the, the backyard and like where we hang out. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, it works awesome. Except you gotta manually switch to it. Right, because otherwise you'll be on the shitty, the super fucking weak, shitty signal from the way on the other side of the house. Exactly, and that, that that's that's why I went with the with the mesh networks, and well, the the Orby has thus far disappointed me. Yeah, man. But I bought uh, it at Costco, and they'll take it back regardless. So I might just go do that and maybe swap it out for an Eero, or I don't know. Yeah, man. Just, one of these days, man. One of these days, the shit'll. That's oh, that's, Eero, Eero needs line of sight. Eero is like they, they need practically line of sight to be, to be able to communicate. I think that's what the issue was. Oh, really? Yeah, and I need line it on sight. separate floors. I need it on completely separate floors. Why would it need? Li- oh, that's that's gross. Yeah, maybe it wasn't. I, I don't know. One of the, one of the others. <sighs> it, huh. It's impractical for a three story house, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I'm up for suggestions. Uh, I'm going to do a factory reset this weekend on the Orbi and see if I can get it to work. Because the, the one thing that I do have different is I, I use the 10.0.1.1 as my uh, primary address for the router. Sure. Oh, thank you, Tonda. Um, instead of using the 192.168.1.1. Um, it, just because, like, I with Apple, it's always the 10.0.1.1. And all my static addresses that I've set up have been on that 10.0.1.1. So mm-hmm. I might just actually physically switch it over. I might I might even go full scale and say, screw it. Let's go with um, uh, all default. Let's go with the 192. Let's go with a different, completely different passcode, a different SSID. Let's just do everything from scratch to see if we can m- fuss it out. But man, what a pain in the ass. And now that, it, now that I'm, I've had this back surgery and going up and down stairs is a pain in the butt. So basically I'm living in the basement right now. Um, yeah, it's just, why won't it just fucking work? (laughs) 
Yeah. Uh, you know what does work? When you go over to patreon.com slash ritual misery and you click the, the button on there, uh, that works. And you actually become a patron and uh, you help us make this show work. Uh, giving us a dollar is the pretty much the world to us. And uh, we appreciate everyone that that, um, that contributes. All of and our patrons are heroes. So com- so convenient that uh, Nightbot just dropped the link right there in the chat room. Beautiful. That is yeah. awesome. Thank you, Nightbot. Uh, we we did we ever figure out what's going on with with Patreon? No, we need to. Yeah, we need to look at that because we're we've been getting some weird numbers. Like, well, so Patreon in the portal will tell us that uh, you know here here's what you're going to get, you're going to get $3, but we end up getting like either a dollar 50 or 12, $4 and 50 cents. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Something's, something's wonky with Patreon right now. And I don't know what it is. Yeah. So I'm really, really weird. Uh, I'm not really weird. I'm really concerned about how weird it is. Well, I guess I am really weird, but whatever. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's messed up. It's, it's, it's kind of jacky. Um, what else we got, dude? I mean, it's uh, it's one of those weeks, man. Like you, you've had so much shit going yeah. on. I've had so much shit going on. You know what I did? I watched uh, I watched Fraggle Rock today with Autumn. No way. Yeah. Down to Fraggle Rock. Yeah. Down to Fraggle Rock. I have you watched Fraggle Rock lately? No. Like it's, dude. It's been at least a decade, probably two. Actually, it's probably been two and a half. It doesn't hold up. Really. Really. No. At all. That is so disappointing. It's, 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 now Autumn loved it. She sat there and watched it regardless because it's puppetry and, and weirdness. But yeah, (laughs) no, I didn't, uh, I didn't enjoy it at all. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm high, but I, I I thought it was like, this is, (laughs) this is awful. (gasps) Man. That, ah, Jesus. Yeah, that sucks, dude, because I had the same experience when I was deployed to Afghanistan. Afghanistan? I think it was Afghanistan. Somebody had ordered the uh, Thundercats, like all like all season one Thundercats. Mm -hmm. And I was like, fuck, yes, this was one of my favorite cartoons. I cannot wait to watch this shit again. Uh, No, fuck Thundercats. (laughs) It It is. Didn't hold up either. Dude, no. Watching it as a as an adult, it is fucking garbage. The, the the stories in the animation are mediocre. Mm-hmm. The only thing that stands out to me when I'm watching it as an adult is snarf, snarf. Yeah, but this coming from the same it's guy that all- can't get past Rick and Morty because of all the barfing and uh, and and burping. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Oh my god. Yeah. So like- Tonda says that the remake of Thundercats is pretty good. Yeah, it's kind of been on my watch list for a really long time. Uh, I want to watch that. And I want to watch the newer version of Masters of the Universe. I say newer; it's like probably twelve years old at this point. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I haven't I haven't checked out either of those yet. You know, it does hold up though, even though Scooby Doo. Like, uh, yeah, Scooby Doo is the shit. All of them, all the Scooby Doo's. Yes, except for the ones that have Scrappy in them. I hate Scrappy. I, I even I even dig Scrappy because at least at least he's he goes into it the outcast. Like he he's the reason that you. He's the one that starts the trouble and then it resolves, but he's always the one that starts the trouble. I, like I can, I can deal with that. Um, yeah. Okay. I yeah. It, I just oh, man, Scooby Doo holds up so much better than half his other shit that came out in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. It's sad. Yeah. Um, I picked up the PlayStation again, playing the Division because I got nothing better to do. So I played the Division for like three hours. Okay. I got. You have to, a capture card. You have a capture card where you can stream it? No. Oh. But it's PlayStation. Ew. You can stream directly from the PlayStation. Oh, I thought you said it was a... Oh, oh. Shit. When you said PlayStation, my brain automatically went to PS1. Oh, no. No. Gotcha. Be, that okay. would be sweet. Um. So, yeah, I logged in and tried to do some, some incursions and shit. I spent most of my time fighting the same four battles over and over and over again because we'd get just into the hard part and someone would bail. Mm. What 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 game is this again? Division. Tom mm. Tom Clancy's The Division. It's a first gotcha. person shooter. It's it's a little different than most of the other ones, but um, it's probably my favorite first person shooter because it can be played solo and in a group. 
Uh, of course, it's a lot more fun when you're playing online in a group, but that, I mean, this one guy came on and he was like the boss of everything. He knew everything going on everywhere. And he was like, yeah, I'm just laggy. So I'm going to quit. Like we're all laggy. It's Sony. Come on. That's how this <laughs> game is designed, but whatever. Um, right. so that was just another course of, of frustration. I really, I probably, sh- I, I'm, I'm, it's a good thing I'm not a drug addict because being on drugs just pisses me off about everything all the time. <laughs> um, yeah. See, I don't, most people, they get on drugs and then they're just like happy and loopy. Well, at least the kind of drugs you're on. I don't know. I, I think it's because I'm concentrating on all the reasons why my happy loopy is going away. Mm. Like, you're an idiot. You're killing my happy loopy. Now I'm pissed off. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so you're kind of a photography guy. You like photography. I do. Uh, have you ever gotten any good shots of the moon? Um, I know it's one of the things that's always like, anytime I'm prepared, I, there's clouds in the way and shit like that. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. The moon is one of those things that I, I love looking at and I'd love to get really good pictures of, but I can never quite get it done. Yeah. I've never been able to like ever. It doesn't matter what kind of camera I've got. Mm. Uh, granted I've never had a high end camera with, uh, y- you know, zoom lens and all this right. kind of crap. It's always been uh, point and shoots and, uh, and iPhones for you. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm guessing you're referring to this this uh, picture I found on the old Reddit. Yeah. Of a what was it like a a not quite a full second uh, movement of the International Space Station in front of the uh, front of the moon. Yeah, it was like just under a second. It was like point nine. Yeah. Second. So it's pretty cool. And, the, and there's another picture on here. Um, uh, they they got the the whole. The whole movement of of it, like all in in one long string or whatever. Here it is. Mm. Uh, let me show you this too as well. Uh, yeah. So this is multiple shots of the ISS going in front of the moon. I think this is just so fucking cool, man. This is like one of those things. Of course, conspiracy people are gonna be like, "Well, you can fake that," but I just think it's really cool. And to me, this gives some proof that there's that the conspiracies are full of shit. Yeah. When I look at this, dude. Ever since I was a kid, I always looked at the moon and, and I always thought Death Star because I'm mm-hmm. a Star Wars nerd. Mm-hmm. You know, that's no moon. It's a space station. Right. But when I see this picture of the ISS going in front of it, dude, that's a fucking TIE fighter. Right. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. And, it, and it's not very far away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when you when you put up this time lapse picture, it's a whole squadron of TIE fighters. In formation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Good. I, what gets me about this, okay, so you got to have some, you know, you got to, we got to plan this out. You can't just happen to be taking a picture of the moon and, and get a, you know, get a picture of the ISS in front of it or whatever else. Um, so to plan it out and to actually make it happen and to get, you know, a, a composite shot of, you know, every frame that your camera will take at the time, pretty cool, pretty accomplishment. That's, that's not bad. However, look how big the ISS is. Yeah. It's literally, thousands of miles away from us and it's still visible like the scale of space never ceases to just completely barely. amaze me yeah yeah it's barely visible to us though like that's a zoom that's a super zoom lens well, right but you, you you can still see it you can go you can see the reflections from it during a normal oh, yeah night, you know and you yeah, can watch you it can trail see- across the sky and stuff yeah, you can definitely see the the uh, light, like one of the flashing lights on it. You you can you can see that when it's when it's going by overhead. Just how wicked is that, dude? Like that's that's what that's the this is the age we live in right now. Yeah, completely Wait, crazy. The age of Aquarius. Oh oh god, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> not okay. No, not Got so it. much. No. Um. Mike Beam says, technically, I don't think it's thousands of miles. It's only 254 miles. Whatever. I'm high. Uh, everything seems really far away from me right now. Thousands. Thousands. We've been doing this show for thousands of minutes tonight. Thousands. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, 36 followers. Uh, 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 look, man, I don't know. That that shit's not supposed to be there. Uh, uh, um, leave me. Whatever, man. See, I just kill, I just kill all the shit. That's not what I wanted to do. Oh my gosh, was this like a? Uh, oh, we just went dark. Yeah. What happened? 
See? <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not it. Oh my god. There it is. Oh, that that didn't work either. There's no bueno. <laughs> Donda says legacy podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I thought we went into early retirement just now. Oh my gosh. Uh, hey, there we go. Now I got it. Look at that. Look at that. I'm 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 on I'm on it now. Look, woohoo. Man. Yeah. I, I, are- well, so here's look. the thing. I was I was in uh, I was I was actually so I don't know if if you don't know how how Twitch does things and how you have to incorporate stuff in between OBS Twitch and all the plugins and stuff like that. Yeah. It yeah. get, it can get really confusing really fast. And basically, I just wanted to go in there tonight and take that little, little affiliate follower account thing out of the way because it mm-hmm. doesn't automatically update with the current number of followers. So I just turned it off. And I don't know why it just randomly came back. And I'm glad somebody mentioned it because, holy crap, that's that's a load of shit. But um, the tools, all these Twitch tools and everything else, I know there's, there's like some that you can get where uh, whoever's giving you the most bits gets like a little thing at the top. And I was trying to find out where that could be. And... Um, <sighs> It, it it's so irritating and I'm hoping that, that my back starts feeling, you know, the pain starts going away so I can actually concentrate on these things and learn about it and, and get it pushed out. Um, shit counters now eight times. Is that, what, what is the shit? We're, we're, are we, are we counting the number of times shit fucks up? Is that what's going on? Uh, <laughs> I might've missed something. I might have to scroll back. I, yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, if, if it's counting how many times we say shit, like we said, we've said shit probably at least 50 times already oh, during geez. the show. Um. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. So the this, bot is this is gonna get us on the uh, on the front page of, uh, of Twitch. <laughs> Ritual misery. Oh yeah, that's the show that sh- that says shit every sentence. Yeah, that's that shitty show that says shit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Um, so I've never been through surgery and had my, my, my voice change as much as this one has because of the, the pressure on the palate. And I think it's because I was on my belly for this one, but oh my gosh, it's so annoying. They're actually, they're actually tagging it more often than Nightbot can keep track. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah. So what have you been up to other than uh, the, uh, the Thor Ragnarok thing, man? Uh, learning my new iPhone. Oh yeah. Uh, and I both got the iPhone yeah. 10. Any new tricks uh, and tips? Uh, you know, I, really the only, the only tricks that I can think of, not, not even really tricks, just like tips. If you have an iPhone 10, if you want to see your, your actual battery life, because that's, that's something a lot of people flipped out about is that there's no like actual percentage displayed on your screen for mm-hmm. the battery life. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is is grab it and slide it down and it'll show you your your actual percentage. Right. So there's a tip for you. That's all I got. Um my tip would be that uh, Tiny Defense 2 is free today. Really? Yeah. Super fun little game. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, it's uh it's it's fun. Um, pick that up. Uh, I don't know. Saw that on Twitter or some shit. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, the stupidest little things about this phone, dude, I really enjoy it. And I'm reading all these reviews and people are still hating on the same shit they're hating on before. They, they can't get over the notch, which by the way, the notch doesn't do anything for me it, other than the, the random annoyance for an app that d- hasn't, um, optimized for it yet. It's, yeah. it's just there. It's just, you, I, I hardly even fucking notice it. Yeah, um, no, yeah, exactly. The the only time I notice it is the same time that you notice it when something didn't accommodate for it. Mm-hmm. Where, so it's got a black bar there instead of actually utilizing the space. Yep, That's the exactly. only time I notice it. And, and half the time what I found out is, oh, well, I'm holding it wrong. Because if I flip it over, now the black bar is in spot that the screen I don't care about. So yeah. it's, it's almost like antenna gate again. It's, 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 <laughs> it's notch yeah, exactly. gate. Notch gate, yeah. Notch gate. Uh, yeah, whatever. Anybody that's pissed about the notch, Wow, uh, yeah. your life's pretty good if that's what you got to be pissed about. Um, I am three episodes into Stranger Things, enjoying that. That's uh, that's that's interesting. 
Yep, yep. Um, I like the new the new dynamic that the show has brought forth. It's not just a straight continuation. Like you can tell, there's been some character development and some story development in the yeah. meantime. And uh, really getting into that, and hoping to hoping to finish that up this weekend. Actually, so next week we'd be able to talk about that. Awesome. Um, and also on Netflix, Chappelle. Dude, Dave Chappelle is back, and he has not just one, but two specials on Netflix. And uh, they're pretty good, dude. I haven't watched them. They're pretty good. I knew they were on your queue. I knew they were coming out, but I didn't know they were actually out. And is yeah. these are two of the four that he's got planned, I believe. Yeah, I think I think that's what I heard too. Um, yeah, so so funny. If you're an old school Chappelle fan, absolutely, like you have. It's mandatory. You have to check these out. Uh, but if you're not super familiar with him, uh, I still recommend checking these out. Uh, yeah, there's some there's some bad words and he gets kind of dirty sometimes, but it's not overly so. That's one of the things I was worried about uh, because it, you remember Rodney Carrington, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so a, a amazing stand-up comedian. I saw him live in in Vegas when I lived there. I saw him uh, in, uh, we used in to, Abilene. Yeah, we used to watch or uh, listen to him all the time on the Bob and Tom show growing up. Uh, super funny dude. I don't know how many times I, uh, one of his comedy CDs I've played, I probably played that thing until it just doesn't work anymore. Um, so good. He has a special on Netflix that came out just a couple of months ago and I tried to watch it. I can't do it, dude. Yeah. Can't do it. He got divorced, got really fat. Like he's literally like twice the man he used to be. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, you know, he was kind of always dirty. But he's fucking filthy nasty now. Yeah. Like before he would say like, like, oh yeah, like, you know, went into the bedroom, see if I can get me some, you know, some, some of that pedussy, you know, or something like that. Like you'd say something like that. Now he's straight up like, yeah, so I, I shoved my cock right into her fucking cunt hole. He's like, whoa, dude, what are you doing? And Jesus. that's like ha- just how he talks throughout his routine. And it's like, I don't know if I can hang with you anymore, dude. <laughs> Can't do it. I didn't finish it. I watched probably, uh, I would say a third of it. I think I watched a third of it. So maybe I'll go back to it. But uh, first time was a no-go. But Chappelle, um, on the other hand, complete opposite reaction. It was so much better than I was than I was afraid that it would be. <laughs> um, so good. So good. I, I love both of them. Both of the specials that are out now. I. Uh, so this whole Hollywood thing's coming around. All right. And who's this again? That's uh that, that was what, Rodney Carrington, you said? Yeah. Um now the and this is what I was afraid would happen. Like uh, I'm concerned with it, but it, it, I I just want it to be genuine. That's all I want. Is so now that all these people are coming out about all the all the uh, you know, actors and and head honchos at film industries and shit like like that that have uh Use their power and privilege to subver- be subversive with women and treat them poorly and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just want it to be genuine. So I, it, whatever comes out, comes out. Like, I'm all for it. Whatever comes out, comes out. As long as it's, it's true. And I was reading today about how some people, some women are coming out against uh, Louis C.K. Yeah. About how he likes to whack it off in front of women. Mm. Um. At first, I was like, "Well, yeah, that you would expect that from Louis C.K." Yeah, you know, and it, it, yeah, I was like, "This, you, you kind of expect that's what he that's what he jokes about in his show." So then, when you t- say that you know that's how Rodney Carrington's act is turning now, I'm like, "Ah, I, I don't need any more of these people that I admire for their their talents and their expressiveness to be getting dragged down into this shit." Like, can can we just not be assholes anymore? And not like regular assholes, like perverted uh subversive assholes like what the hell's going wrong with our, our our entertainment history or entertainment system dude well what i what i think is going on is uh we're moving into uh like an actual culture change where there's going to be some accountability um we went through a thing uh, like in the you know in recent decades about workplace harassment uh where you know it used to be where you you know, the boss would call the secretary into the office to get his weekly Hummer or whatever. Mm-hmm. That was a thing. And now that's like not even fucking heard of. 
for the most part. I'm right. sure that shit happens somewhere, but for the most part, that's like, oh, hell no, that doesn't happen. Um, up until like right now, uh, or hopefully the near future, the, you know, entertainers like, um, uh, well, it, it could be like producers, directors, uh, uh, you know, high, highly paid actors, people like that, comedians. Uh, yeah, it, like they just expect people to just uh, bow to their whims. So if I want my weekly Hummer, if I want my daily, if I want my hourly Hummer, there should absolutely be someone there to provide that. And if there's not, I'm going to um, you. I'm going to pick you. Get over here. Right. I I'm I need my uh, I need my fix. And then if you don't, they're like, well, okay, you're not in the movie anymore. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, how about you? It's your turn. Right. You know what I mean? And that's just kind of the the culture of it. And now I think we're we're getting to the the point where all of those people are being held accountable. That's this, you know that's that's how I see it. This is one of those things, man. Where 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 is it? Where does it stop? Like I just can can we just again? We're at that point where I'm like I don't I don't want the battle. I just want the result. Okay, I want I'm, I'm glad it started. Yep. I'm glad all this shit's coming out. Can we just get to the end so we know who we can at least halfway trust and enjoy their movies and shit like that? Like I just. Well, here's here's the thing. And jury kind of touched on it this week uh, about you know. Well, I, can I watch these movies anymore, man? I maybe I won't tell all my friends that I'm watching Louis C.K. or I'm watching, uh, you know, whatever a, a Miramax movie or whatever because they feel that you know we need to punish the artist or whatever. Well, you know what? If the movie's on fucking Netflix, Netflix has my money already. It doesn't matter if I watch the thing or not. Right. Uh, if I enjoy the thing, maybe this makes me an asshole, but I'm still gonna watch the thing. Right. I'm like I'm still thing. I'm still laughing at, at Cosby's jokes from from the '80s, you know. Um, yeah, but it's one of those things like you don't just go to the water cooler like yeah, ah, Cosby's pretty great, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know that's just something that you you don't do. But if you, I mean if you know if a, I don't even think Cosby reruns come on anymore, but it, if if they did and you have to watch it, I mean, you're not automatically an asshole for watching it. Right. Or even enjoying it for that matter. I mean, so I'm going to take the cynical view here, but if you, if you ask someone to whack off in front of them and they say, okay, uh huh, like it's when they say no, but you do it anyway, or when you do it without them knowing, that's when it's, that's when you're, that's when you're a dick, right? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. You need to, yes, you need to respect others' wishes. I mean, uh, it, it, I was just, I was reading the reports, and and half of it was like, oh, this is disgusting. Th- these guys, this guy's a, a, a fucking complete waste of skin. Uh, why yeah. can't that talent be put in someone with a little bit more respect? And then the other, the, like once in a while, I've been saying, like, yeah, that's like if you if that's what you want, you have to ask. And then they say no, and they leave, and now they're going to report it years later. Like that's not even a thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's because I mean, the, you, it's the same way in a bar. You go in a bar. Hey, you want to hook up? And they're like, No, that's not a thing. Ten years from now. Yeah. Exactly. If they're like, so, uh, Yo, Oh my God, that dude tried to hook up with me at a bar one time. Right. You know, that's one thing. But if but if, if he's like, if she's like, he tried to hook up with me at a bar one time. I told him no, and he said. Uh, fuck yeah, or fuck you, I think we're gonna, and he, like, put his hand up my skirt and grabbed my junk. That's some, That's a different story. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I guess it's just a pit. I don't know. There's really no way for us to know, you know, none of us were there. M- maybe, it's on... maybe it was all just locker room talk. <laughs> don't, oh, God. That is the stupid, um... <laughs> Damon Horowitz, Philosophy in Prison. Kent, yeah. I know specifically you picked this one because you wanted to find the shortest one you could find. It's three minutes and some odd change long. It's far, far. It's, it's not even four minutes. Like, I, I, I've had pisses that last longer than this TED Talk. And <laughs> I got I to gotta say, man, those pisses were far more um, uh, 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 satisfactory. Yeah. <laughs> no, you nailed it, man. That's exactly why I picked this one. Because I realized about half an hour before the show started, or before pre-show was f- supposed to start, oh fuck, we don't have a dead talk. 
<laughs> so not only did I want to watch a short one, I needed to find something that you would have time to watch before the show as well. Oh, I watched it. I watched it and I hated every bit of it. This is, th- th- there might be some, some good solid, uh, 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 there might be something substantial to pull out of this, out of this Ted talk. I didn't find it. Yeah. So it's basically a guy, he's a college professor that teaches in a prison. He teaches philosophy. Right. And he basically, he taught a prisoner right from wrong, I guess, or like how to question philosophy or something. Sure. Yep. And then the Ted, then the Ted talk was over. Right. It was, (laughs) this is like a Ted snippet that should never, never even be on the site. Like this, (laughs) this particular talk is, is kind of a, it's, it's a, uh, it's a disgrace to the Ted brand, is what this I is. I wouldn't go that far. I, I would. wouldn't go that far. I would. It wasn't bad. It Th- just this, wasn't. Good. This earns three thumbs down for me, and I've only got two hands. That that tells you where I'm at with it. All right. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So don't watch this one. No. Unless you only have three and a half minutes, and you have a mandatory TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason you should watch it. Like you, you sat down on the shitter. You searched. You found, you watched it twice. You copied <laughs> it and pasted it over on your phone into the show doc. Then you wiped your ass and then you left and you still didn't break 10 minutes. Yeah, that's, that is pretty close to exactly what happened. So don't, and it was all in 10 minutes. Yeah. Don't watch this one. Hey, um, there's a, so, so we got, we got, we got our affiliate. We, uh, we did that a couple weeks ago. There's still some people we know that need their affiliate action. So we're going to call do a little call to actions for some of them. And of course the VOD squad. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Poodle puncher. Uh, a lot of, a lot of you guys know Poodle. Uh, great guy. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh, here soon, I believe it's next weekend. We're going to do the movie party and um, yeah, Poodle is great. Uh, the VOD squad is his show. Uh, we're here. Him and a couple other guys talk about, uh, video on demand streaming, right? Uh, they talk about the gear. They talk about the services. It's kind of a a deep dive on all of that. In yeah. uh, good stuff, good guys. Uh, and and guys plenty of take- tangential humor too. They they go off on tangents and they talk about other stuff uh, relating to the shows and the equipment, everything else. It's kind of like they just like the the central theme is video on demand, but they they find humor in a lot of different things. And it's a good show, yeah. so you should definitely check it out. Go hit them up. Hit hit them with a follow if you haven't already. Yep. Um, and then of course our people over at the Have a Drink Show. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some collaboration with them going on very soon because we we started working with them pretty closely here lately. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, great people. Uh, it's for people that really enjoy beer. Uh, they will give you a history lesson. They will. I guarantee they will make you laugh. Uh, I just watched their their live show this last weekend, um, dude. Like I, that was probably the hardest I've laughed all week, except for when I was watching Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Uh, have a drink show one notch below Chappelle. Um, hopefully you like Chappelle because <laughs> if you don't like Chappelle, then that probably isn't the best uh, review. <laughs> uh, no, that, but they're, they're great. So uh, check those shows out. They are at. Uh, twitch.tv slash the VOD squad and twitch.tv slash have a drink show. Yep. Don't forget the show part. Cause there's another, have a drink on there. That's not nearly as entertaining. Right. Right. I know. Cause I watched it for a while trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what else we got, man? It's kind of like, like I said, at the beginning of the show, it's kind of a light show. We've almost filled up an hour. Yeah. Of it, but So at, at the beginning of the show, dude, I was getting my beer ready. You came out and you had a slice of pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been noticing this like over the last, like, I don't know how long we know each other, like 30 years almost. Mm. Like over the last 30 years, I've noticed that uh, like pizza is just kind of your gig, man. Like you yeah. like pizza, you love pizza. I do. Uh, you know, so you know how, uh, was it two weeks ago? I think you were talking about, you found your, uh, your notebooks that had like old poetry yep. and like just little like uh, writings that, that came out. Well, I, I know I've told you in the past that I've I've found some of that myself. Like you, like a ripped out page from your notebook that you gave me for whatever reason, right? Or, you know something. Well, I found a thing that um, 
this is I believe this is from high school. You were talking about pizza, and uh, this this came right out of one of your notebooks, dude. Oh yeah, yeah. So oh, I want to I want to I want to share this with everybody. All right, all right. Um, I mean, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and vouch for the validity of it because it's uh because I'm high. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. All right, so this is these are your words from like uh, probably about twenty five years ago. Okay, uh, pizza was invented by a shitty Alaskan chef named Scooby Doo. Oh, to make a pizza, you need to take a lump of router and make a thin, round, ass up moon. Then you cover it with wired sauce, mm. random cheese, and fresh chopped fraggles. Next, you have to bake it in a very hot shit. When it is done, cut it into thousands of balls. Some kids like cold pizza the best, but my favorite is the Oxycontin pizza. If I could, I would eat pizza 25 times a day. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's ironic that at such a young age in high school, I already knew the value of the opiates. Um, <laughs> right. And, and that you had to slice them just right in order to fully appreciate <laughs> ingesting all that, uh, that, that shit warmed pizza. Uh, I mean that, that's a, that's a really good look back at uh at at, at my my view of pizza over the years, <laughs> right? And uh, if, if people are 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 interested in reading more of your uh your works from throughout the years, uh, become a patron at patreon dot com slash ritual misery. We have a treasure box in there where we're adding stuff ever so often from our past and uh, some of. Amos's works are going to find their way into that very soon. So check yeah. that out. That could be a lot of fun. I uh, might even uh, make, make a few of them some ad libs and see what people can come up with uh, out of my stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa, that's a good idea. <laughs> Com- oh, my completely gosh. Completely original, by Amos, the way. Uh, what's that? A completely original idea, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, completely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, if if people want to uh, hear any more of your musings in real time, where would they go to do that? Twitter.com slash ritual misery. And uh, real quick, Fitz and Squid, thank you for the cheers. Um, the uh, yeah, Ethan, at Ethan Kane on the twi- Twitter. Is that, is that what I said? Is that where we're at? Where are we at? We're, 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 what we're line are twi- we on? We're on the Twitter. Are we on line 50 <laughs> here? What's going on here? Um, yeah, Twitter.com slash Ethan Kane. Uh, you can find me there. You can also find me um, on, on Twitter. Have I mentioned Twitter? Um, yeah. Oh, don't uh, don't forget to mention Twitter. That's right. Uh, Twitter dot com slash Ethan Kane. Yeah, that's where you can find me. Um, how about you, Kent? Yeah, I'm also on Twitter at rm underscore del noche. If you were interested in my beer reviews, like the one that I had in the pre-show today. Head over to Untapped and I am Del Noche on there. Add me. Ooh, add you. It, it almost sounds dirty. <laughs> yeah, and and of course you can find uh, everything else about our show and follow our subreddit, man. There's like nobody following our subreddit because we only add stuff in there after the fact. But you can always go in there and see what else other people are saying, which I, I I'm pretty sure I just contradicted myself somehow. But cruise on by there. <laughs> And that's going to be ritualmisery.reddit.com. Uh, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show on our and on our website, ritualmisery.com. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to the post show. Uh, the, 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 the pre-post post show. Uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening and watching. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your high as hell Ritual Misery podcast. I see ya. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>